ito po yung topic for the entire webinar. And ang ano po ang ang take off point ko po is coming from Jeremiah chapter 9 verses 23 and 24. Please allow me to read that part. Jeremiah 20 uh, Jeremiah 9 23 and 24. Ito po ang sinasabi sa Jeremiah. This is what the Lord says. Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom or the strong man boast of his strength or the rich man boast of his riches. But let him who boast boast about this. That he understands and knows me. I am the Lord who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in this I delight, declares the Lord. So, purihin po ang Panginoon sa kanyang salita. As I was stated po, ito po ang ating tatlong objectives for the youth. And since uh, tayo po ay mga kamanggagawa, we would like to ano to offer this to the youth that they are able to differentiate between the temporal and eternal as was discussed po by Pastor Roni to be able to make godly aspirations and to pursue God's desires. And so, please allow me to begin. Whenever nagko-contact po ako ng ano, ng pakikinig sa counseling, ito po ang tinatanong ko. Teka muna, i-assess muna natin. Three questions you need to address in your life. If I'm talking to an old man, a young person, or a young professional, I always ask three fundamental questions. Number one is the assessment question. Where are you? I-assess natin kung nasaan ka na. So we begin to discuss, ano ang, nasa, ano ang mga training na natanggap mo na? Ano yung mga dinaanan mo na? What are your pains? And what are your joys in, in life? What are your peaks and valleys, so to speak? So ano na yung mga dinaanan mo and where are you right now? First question. Ang haba po ng usapang yan. Ikalawa, where are you heading? Or where is God taking you? That is a directional question. Where is God taking you? If I am talking to a, a uh, mag-graduate na ano and naghahanap siya ng direksyon, Pastor, Saan po ba ako pupunta? Sa fine arts o sa engineering? Eh, ano ba, saan ka ba nag-e-enjoy? Nag, nag Again, you go back to the assessment question and then help him process towards this direct, directive question or direction question. Where are you heading? Naalala ko po, nagko-quiet time po ako sa bus. Yung Diyos bus, yung kulay dilaw. Galing po ako sa Viluna because I am a medtech intern po ako during that time. That was 1977. Kaya po ako papunta ng UST kasi medtech po ako sa UST. At doon sa aking huling, ano, huling uh, six months, three months po o six months, nagpa-assign ako sa Viluna because I wanted to be exposed in histopathology. Kasi gusto ko pong mag-doktor. And I'm on my way, nagpaalam ako from Viluna, a military hospital, towards UST. Bakit po? Kasi pumasa ako eh. Sa medicine. Pumasa ako, sabi lang ganyan, uh, you, are, you are for interview. And three doctors will interview you. Nagbabasa po ako ng quiet time kung ganyan. No? Ang sabi sa book of Psalms, and the Lord will direct you or the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. King James pa. Gideon's Bible ko, nagbabasa ako ano, sa bus. So inintay ko po, pagdating ko po doon, I was really praying and asking Lord. Uh, kiniklaim ko po na ako po ay magiging healer, magiging doktor po ako. And lo and behold, Binuklat, nung tinawag ng pangalan ko, binuklat nila yung ano, 
yung aking yung aking data yung aking application and the doctor said Mr. Manuel it seems like uh, your father is working as a textile vendor in Central Market is he earning 100,000 annually that was 1977 sabi ko i was taken aback sabi ko hindi ko po alam eh but i think Nagsisika po ang aking parents towards this endeavor. Second question, what do you think about the Marcoses? No? Sabi ko, what has that got to do with me applying for medicine proper? Yun po, yun yung dalawa. Tapos nagkwentuhan na lang kami, tapos tapos na yung assessment, eh, yung aking, ano, yung aking uh, interview. After two weeks, kasi out of 3,000, pumasok po ako sa 10% which is 300. Ang kukunin lang nila is 250. And doon sa 250, hindi ko na po nakita yung pangalan ko. Notwithstanding, nakita po kami ni Francisco Duque III. Kaklase ko po siya nung Lourdes, nung si kami dalawa ni Role nag-aaral sa Lourdes School. Ora, andyan ba yung pangalan mo? Sabi ni Francisco Duque. Sabi ko, wala eh. Well, puputulin ko po doon. Kasi ang alam ko po, siya pasok, ako hindi ako nakapasok. And I became a medical representative in a pharmaceutical industry. And I was questioning the Lord. Lord, what happened? 1986, I resigned from my job as a medical representative and become a church planter in Galas Balik Balik. 1986 po, hanggang ngayon po, pastor. Sabi ko, Lord, akala ko po ang conviction ko from your word is to be a doctor. Pero hindi po bali na sa Ministry of Healing pa din po ako. Where are you? Where are you heading? And thirdly, how do you get there? This is the mechanics. Ano ang gagawin mo para ikaw ay makarating from point A to point B? So these are important questions you will, you will need to ask your people, especially the young people na naghahanap ng direksyon. Saan ka mag-uumpisa? Three questions. Where are you? Where are you heading? And how do you get there? So as we have read yung Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23, there are three types of strong influencers. Ang sabi dito sa Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 23, this is what the Lord says, Let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, or the strong man boast of his strength, or the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts, and so forth. So these are the influencers not only during the time of Jeremiah, pero even in our time. The wise Ito yung mga professor natin at the university is also a discipleship. It, it's a discipleship program na ibinabato sa ating mga anak. It is one way of discipling them. Pero their way, their philosophy at yung kanilang kaisipan ay pinapasa parang bank transfer from their minds to the minds of our youth. These are the wise people. Ito yung maraming pinag-aralan. And then you have the strong. These are people who had flexed their, their muscles. This may be the politicians. These are those who had uh, been able to flex their socio-economic muscles, so to speak. And these are very strong. And then the third influencer are the rich man. Si Pastor Oli nag-post noon na ito yung mga richest people in the entire world. Elon Musk, if you are familiar with that. Bill Gates, and so forth. And so, these are people na kapag nagsalita, nakaka-influensya doon sa ups and downs of stocks. Nimbawa, nagsalita si ano, Elon Musk one time, na hindi siya panic doon sa Bitcoin. Ay, bumagsak yung, yung ano, bumagsak yung Bitcoins. Nagsalita lang siya, ha? And ang dami niyang following at ang daming sumunod the rich. Now, is it wrong to be wise? 
Is it wrong to be wise? Is it wrong to be strong? Is it wrong to be rich? Hindi po. Kasi ang dami pong mayayaman sa Bible. Example, Abraham is rich. Job is very rich. And when he died, he was double rich. There are many people in the New Testament who are rich. Uh, paki -mute si Hello po, paki-mute na lang po. In the New Testament, there are many rich people. And they have utilized their richness, their rich, riches to honor the Lord. So it's not wrong. In fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, ano po ang sabi doon? For God has given us the power to produce wealth and thus uh, confirm the covenant with the fathers. So influencers. So the youth, yung young people natin would come and ask us, masama po bang may yumaman? Well, ito po yung sinasabi ng tao. Now, Deuteronomy is called the second law. And this was written by Moses that doon sa tinatawag nating the Torah or the law made up of five books of Moses. And this is the fifth book. And this is the second law. The reading of the second law was given to the next generation kasi naubos na yung first generation eh, after 40 years in the wilderness. So Deuteronomy is the reading of the second law which is or the second law was read to them. And these are the three sermons of the last three sermons of Moses given to the next generation. And do you would you like to know what are the last three sermons of Moses in Deuteronomy? Ito po yung tatlo. Kung ako ay mawawala na at ang maglilid ay si Joshua, ano ang maiiwan ko sa inyo bilang patnubay? Number one. First sermon ni Moses, you are to live, Israelites, you are to live a distinct life. You are different from the rest. You honor God and worship God. They honor idols. There has to be a distinction. Chapters 1 to 4 gives us a time to experience with your environment the distinct life. Pagdating mo sa chapter 5 hanggang chapter 10, ito yung sinasabing second sermon ni Moses daw. And this is the directed life. How is your life to be directed? It is to be directed by listening to godly people, to prophet like him, the word of God, the Holy Spirit later on. And so, the life of this new generation who will enter and possess the land has to be a directed life. Directed by whom? Their God. So, ang tanong, sino po ba ang nagdadirect sa mga anak po natin? Baka yung kanilang mobile phone ay ang daming pinakikinggan nila sa mobile phone nila. So that is directing their life. Mobile legend at kung ano-ano pang mga games ang iba nga nabubulid sa pornography nabubulid sa kung ano-ano ang pinapanood and nag enjoy sila ng katitiktok doon directed life Moses gave a second sermon which is a life that is directed by no less than one God not the gods of the nation but one God thirdly from, verse, uh, from chapters 11 to 32, he preached or he gave his last or third sermon. And the third sermon is that live a devoted life. Isa lang ang passion ninyo at isa lang ang mamahalin ninyo. Last Sunday, ako pong speaker sa aming church. And as a, as a the former senior pastor, now a volunteer and a consultant pastor, Ang ibinigay po sa akin is on marriage. And it says, as we continue to expound on the text on marriage, 
the Lord refused the question of the Pharisees. Why then did Moses allow the divorce in chapter 24 of Deuteronomy? By the way, the book of Deuteronomy is the most, it is the most quoted book of our Lord Jesus, the book of Deuteronomy. And so Pharisees came to test him. At sinabi, eh bakit sinabi ni, ni Moses na po pwede namin i-divorce by issuing our wives a, a certificate of divorce? Kasi ang titigas ng, ng puso ninyo eh. But it was not so sa creation account na sinulat din ni Moses. So what is Jesus saying? Ang point of reference is not the Mosaic law which is ni Moses pero yung creation account na isinulat ni Moses. It was not so from the beginning. And probably if we have if we are given enough time sometime, we will discuss yeah, about yeah. this. A devoted life ang sabi ni, ni Moses sa Israelite. So at the portals of the promised land, Moses gave them three important sermons. The second generation has to have a distinct life different from others. E eh kung pinagtapat niyo yung young people ninyo at saka yung sa mundo, tingnan niyo kung may difference. Kapag wala, ang laki problema nating mga pastor. Are they being directed by the word of God? Has, have they found time to listen? This is the ear gate and this is the eye gate. Yan po yung sinasabi ko. Eye gate, ear gate. Bantayan niya yan. Kasi kung ano pumasok sa mata at sa tenga, bumababa sa puso. And if the heart is full of what we have allowed to enter the eye gate and the ear gate, ang sabi sa Proverbs, guard your heart. Because you may be entertaining so many idols inside. A distinct life, a directed life, and a devoted life. Three last sermons of Moses before the Lord buried him. Sabi niya, hindi siya pumalag eh. Sabi ni Moses, chapter 34. Ang, sa, ang description doon, ang eyes ni Moses ay 2020. It is not weak. At ang lakas ni Moses ay naandu doon pa din. Nakakaakit pa nga ng bundok. Pero hindi ka papasok sa promised land. Hindi niya kinontra si Lord. Lord, maayos pa ang aking paningin nakakapagbasa pa ako at malakas pa ako kung pwede pa ako magpatuloy sa gawain. Pag sinabi ni Lord ng hanggang, hanggang dyan ka lang, ipiniprepare niya yung second generation. Pag hindi ka umalis dyan, hindi lalabas si Joshua. Ah, nagsasalita ang Panginoon sa kalagitnaan. Now let's move from Moses, Deuteronomy to Ecclesiastes. Here is a quick overview. Koheleth is Ecclesiastes, meaning the preacher, ang mga ngaral. At ang sabi niya dito sa mga ngaral na ito, nang sa, sinasabi ng mga ngaral, nasubukan ko ang lahat ng ito. And nasubukan ko ang mga ito in great, ano, in great, uh, in abundance. Kayamanan, kapangyarihan, uh, fame and honor, and of course, sensual pleasure. All in great abundance. Yet in the end, ang sabi niya, emptiness and disillusionment. Ang sabi ng King James, vanity of vanity, all is vanity. It is a mistranslation. Life is not meaningless if life is connected with God. So it is only meaningless if our, our uh, youth fails to connect themselves with the source of life. Rather, the, the proper interpretation is life is short. Life is short. Bakit? Kasi asul lang yun eh. Nagpapakulo ka ng tubig. Yung lumalabas doon sa takore, yun ang aso. That is a mist and a vapor. Now you see it. Now you don't. From chapter 1 to 11, he shares his regret and his first-hand testimony with others before he dies, especially with the youth, so that hindi nila gagawin ang kanyang mga mistakes na nagawa. 
Kaya niya isinulat ang Ecclesiastes. Sabi nila, noong mabata-bata pa si Solomon, ang sinusulat niya, Song of Solomon, he is so enamored and in love with his wife. Pagkatapos, after, after some years, after many years, ang sinulat niya, Book of Proverbs. Pagkatapos yung matanda na siya at malapit isang matay, Ecclesiastes. Sabi ng ibang mga ngaral o ibang komentarista. In the book of Ecclesiastes, Solomon establishes forever the utter futility of basing one's value in life. Ano bang nagpapaandar sa'yo? Yung possession mo? Yung position mo? Yung professions mo? Yung people you know? Put another way, mas pinapahalagan mo ba yung tinatawag ng corporate world ng power dressing? Appearance. Accomplishments? Associations which are people you know? Acquisitions or things na napundar mo. So whether you use P's or A's, possessions, positions, professions, persons, or appearances, ap ap accomplishments, associations, or acquisitions, ito po ay walang halaga kapag hindi po ito inilalagay sa paanan ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Wrong values. And so, people find in counseling, I have taken several units po in counseling sa alliance din. Alliance sa graduate school. At dito nakikita natin na once naging rigid ang tao, malaking problema na sa mga pastor. Rigidity. Dahil hindi na yan makikinig at tumitigas na yung kanyang, yung kanyang kalooban regarding certain convictions. Kaya hindi niya mabitiw-bitiwan. Tines ni Lord ang the rich young ruler. Ang sabi niya, ah, gusto mo magkaroon ng eternal life, eh di you follow the commandments. Alam naman ni Lord na hindi mo kayang, hindi ka kayang isalba ng commandments eh. Eh ano, I, I have done that. Sabi nga yan ng rich young ruler. So what else do I need? One thing you lack, you sell all your possessions, give it to the poor, and come and follow me. The Lord exactly knows na ang heart ng taong ito ay nasa kanyang hoarded treasures. He would not let it go. If those possessions hindi mo mabitawan, you do not possess it. It possesses you. Sila ang nagmamayari sa'yo kasi hindi mo mabitibitiwan. Pag tayo ay nakahiga na at hindi na dumidirit ang mga mata natin, may isang kusing, katulad ni ng matandang SM uh, owner, not a single dollar o a single centavo na naipon niya all through these years ay maidadala niya sa langit. Dust to dust, ang sabi sa internment natin, kapag tayo ay naglilibing, tayo ay alabok at sa alabok din tayo babalik. Pero ang isang buhay na ginugol sa pagbigay ng papuri sa ating Panginoon will be of much value. So he established the futility of basing one's value in life sa earthly possessions and personal ambition. Again, babalik po ako. Hindi masamang mag mag ano, mag ambisyon na maging doktor. If you will use that to honor the Lord, then become a healer for the Lord. If you would like to be a builder, then be an architect or an engineer, but do this under the guidance of our Lord and he will bless you. Remember, hindi lahat full time. Nehemiah is a cup bearer. Daniel is a statesman. Joseph is an administrator. But he went through very difficult peaks and valleys ng, ng life niya to be honed and trained by our Lord para to have that biggest role niya. And then the vision at age 17 came to fruition at age 30. 
everybody was bowing to him. And he said to his siblings, you meant it evil for me, but God meant it good. And he had sent me here to preserve life. He refused to be embittered by the past. Ibinenta ninyo ako eh. Pinagkakitaan pa ninyo kami. Ako. Ngayon, pagdating ko doon, ibinenta ulit ako. But God was honing him and training him. That is another Bible study actually. So what do we do with our youth? Though young people should enjoy their youth, ang sabi sa chapter 11 verse 9 to 10 ng Ecclesiastes, pabayaan nyo silang mag-enjoy. Pero habang nila ini-enjoy ang biyaya ng Diyos, two things are necessary. Commit themselves to their Creator, chapter 12 verse 1, and resolve to fear the Lord and keep His commands. So two things ang kinakailangan lang maunawaan ng ating mga anak, ng ating youth. Commit mo ang buhay mo sa Panginoon at ikaw ay huwag mong pabayaan ang iyong pagmemeditate sa kanyang salita. God and God's Word. Ang sabi sa Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1, Sabihin, basahin ko na lang po, please allow me. Wala pa akong 30 minutes, Pastor Ronnie. Wala pa po. Ay, salamat. Hinahabol ko po yung 30 minutes ko hanggang doon lang ako. Ito po ang sabi sa Ecclesiastes chapter 12. After everything has been said, ang sabi niyang ganyan, Remember the Lord in the days of your youth. Before the days of trouble come and the years approach when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Hindi na ayoko na, sabi ganyan. Pero pagdating sa chapter 11, verse 9 and 10, itong sabi, Be happy, young man, while you are young, and let your heart give you joy in the days of your youth. Follow the ways of your heart and whatever your eyes see. But know that for all these things, God will bring you to judgment. So then, banish anxiety from your heart, cast off the troubles of your body, for youth and vigor are meaningless. Tapos sinabi niya dito, the duty of man. The duty of man is found in this particular verse. Fear God, verse 13. And keep his commands, for this is the whole duty of man. The word, the phrase, whole duty of man, is best summarized. It's a word ng meaningless. Pero meaningless, meaning uh, from the Hebrew word, havel, a mere breath, empty, and substantial transitory, is what life is to a person separated from God. Kapag hiwalay, Sayang yung naipon mo. Paghiwalay tayo sa Panginoon, hindi natin magamit yung biyaya ng Diyos sa tamang paraan. Right relation to God and His Word bring wholeness and that makes life worthwhile. Remember the Lord in the days of your youth. Ito yung sinasabing sabihin natin sa ating mga anak at mga youth. True investment is eternal. God is eternal, God's word is eternal, man's soul is eternal. Eh kung gusto mong maging engineer, you go ahead. But use your engineering to honor God. And use it as a vehicle or a conduit to reach out to people to tell them that after 100 years of life here on earth, hindi naman tayo aabot dun. Sabi ni Moses, 72, 80 lang tayo. Ino compute ko nga po eh. 65 na ako. Mas matanda po ako kay Pastor Rolly. Ako po yung kuya. 65 na ako. Kapag ako natigok ng 75 times 365 days times 10, sabi ko 3,650 lang yun na ah. Days. Kapag gano'n ang tingin mo, hindi pa na marami. 
ang number of days ko na lang. 3,650 days. And so what am I going to do? I will continue to share the word of God in whatever opportunity I have. Because God is eternal, His word is eternal, and man's soul is eternal. Kaya po sinabi ni C.S. Lewis, all that is eternal is eternally useless. Totoo po yun. All that is not eternal is eternally useless. But if you use temporal things and invest it for the word of God, for the preaching of the word, for the evangelism and discipleship of people, then it, be, it has an eternal value. What then is this temporal things? Pag connected with God gives us eternal value. Again, C.S. Lewis said, and I quote, all that is not eternal is eternally useless. Jeremiah 9, 24, let not the man who is wise boast of his wisdom, nor the strong man boast of his strength, nor the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts boast of this, that he understands and knows me, and that I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth, for in this I delight. And so a man who understands the Lord and knows him, not just in the head, but in the heart, tatlong lugar yan, the head, the heart, and the hands, body, soul, and spirit, the head, the heart, and the hands, 3H, that he understands and knows me, and that the Lord exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in this I delight. That is the person, whether he is rich, strong, or wise. If you have connected yourself in your wisdom, if you have connected yourself in your strength, if you have connected yourself in your riches to the Lord, then he will tell things about himself and you will understand his way. Micah 6.8, sinabi, idudoktong ko na lang. He has told you, O man, what is good and what the Lord requires of you, but to love justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. To love justice, be fair. Maging patas ka. To love compassion or, or mercy, maging mahabagin ka. And then thirdly, to walk humbly with your God. Magpakumbaba ka sa harapan ng Diyos, sa harapan ng tao. Kailangan itong malaman at maintindihan ng mga bata, ng mga anak natin, ng youth, if they are to substitute for us after, then they will turn the world upside down. Let me close with this. Kaninang umaga na nanaginip ako, Alam niyo na papa naginipan ko? Nagsasalita yung salita ng Diyos sa Acts chapter 2. In the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. So sabi ko Lord, Dapat maging instrument kaming mga, mga matatandang pastor para yung mga susunod will know how to proclaim the word of God and they will prophesy. Ang sabi ni God kay Ezekiel, speak to the bones, prophesy to the bones, and the bones begin to move at nagkaroon ng laman, ng mga litid, at na, pero hindi pa ano, hindi pa gumagalaw ng buhay. As, and then the Lord said, prophesy to the wind and when the wind started to blow which is the ruach of god which is the spirit of god then naging mighty army yon gagawin ni lord yan gagawin ni lord yan sa ating mga youth and young professionals if we faithfully bring them to the lord not to us but to the lord kunduwit lang tayo 
Tapos kapag matanda na tayo at sinabi ni Lord na, oh, hindi ka napapasok Rock Manuel ha, sa promised land hanggang dyan pa lang. Hindi na ako magsasabi na, okay pa po mata ko, okay pa po ang aking lakas, meron pa po akong lakas, may collateral pa po akong lakas. Pag sinabi ng Panginoong tapos na, then pabayaan nyo na ang mga susunod na henerasyon. The next Joshua generation, let them lead. And so, is it God's agenda? This is God's ATM na maaaring natinig nyo na kay Pastor Rolly. Mga kabataan, sasabihin natin, tanungin mo kung ano yung tinatahak mo, kung saan ang direksyon. Agenda ba yan ni God o agenda mo? O agenda ni Satan? Siyempre, hindi dapat si Satan. Ikalawa, is it God's timing? T, is it God's timing? Eh, ipinipilit mo eh, hindi pa timing ni God. Huwag mong kakalburuhin. Kasi ang timing ni God is perfect. When God told Joseph that he will be a ruler and even the sun and the moon will bow to him, to his star, it was 17 years old. 17 years old nung binigay yung, yung vision. Pero may incubation period and he has to go through the training ng kanyang skill, knowledge, especially character especially character so is it god's agenda is it god's timing and number three is it god's method be an instrument to help the youth hone their discernment tulungan natin silang mag discern by asking them these questions agenda ba yan ni god Timing na ba ito ni God o nag incubate pa yan? Method ba yan ni God o method mo yan? Then you ask again the three questions plus one. Where are you? Where is your life heading? How do you get there? Assessment, direction, mechanics. Fourth question, is God with you in all of this? Praise the Lord and to Him be all the glory and the honor. Let me close in a short prayer. I'm done. Eternal Father God, marami pong salamat for the preaching of your word, for the study of your word. Alam po namin, Panginoon, na kapag pinakawalan po ang salita po ninyo, it does not return to you empty, but it will accomplish the very purpose for, each, for which it was sent. And so, O oh Lord God, marami pong salamat. Purihin po ang pangalan ninyo. Dahil ang ikinarga po ninyo sa aming puso ngayon ay magkakaroon po ng katiyakan po sa panahon na itinakda po ninyo. At kung ito po ay maipapasa namin sa aming mga youth, sa mga young professionals, sa mga susunod po sa amin, dalangin po namin na pagbungahin po ninyo ito sa kapanahon ng itinakda po ninyo, Heavenly Father. This, O Lord God, we pray for your glory, to your honor, in the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.